everyone, uh, I want to first um, thank you for being such an active member of Corpus Christi University Parish, um, and in a special way for uh, your commitment to liturgical ministry uh, here at Corpus Christi. We're filming these uh, for some trainings we're doing in the different liturgical ministries, ushers, mass coordinators, um, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion servers and lectors, and just a kind of uh, refreshment course in a certain sense. Uh, I've been here a number of years and uh, just sort of some things I've observed, but also kind of refreshing uh, and a few minor changes uh, in, each of the, in each of the ministries. Um, and so again, first of all, thank you for your commitment uh, to serve in these liturgical ministries. They assist us in the worship uh, of God, and that's, of course, the point of joining uh, the liturgical ministries. So before we get to any of the uh, sort of things I want to emphasize in liturgical ministry or any uh, proposed kind of minor changes, I want to stress sort of three foundational principles of, uh, of liturgy and how I kind of approach uh, our worship here at Corpus Christi. The first is that, uh, as the Second Vatican Council taught, the Mass and the liturgy are uh, the source and summit of the Christian life, that what we encounter here every Sunday, every Saturday night and every Sunday, uh, is of the utmost importance to our faith, uh, to the building up of our faith. Um, it's the central mystery of the Christian life that we enter into, into Jesus' death, uh, and resurrection. And so all of the care that we take to making sure that the liturgy is done well, uh, that ministers know what they're doing, uh, that is all built around the idea that we are uh, protecting uh, and upholding the dignity of something that is so central to us as Christians, that we enter in uh, to the sacrifice of Jesus uh, and rise with him so that we can go out into the world and to be his missionaries. Of, of grace and love. And so um, sometimes it can seem like maybe we surround the liturgy with uh, too many regulations and prescriptions and so on. But the truth is we protect with norms those things which we find particularly worthy of, of, of dignity. Uh, and so um, that is uh, one of the reasons that we're so attentive um, here and at other parishes to, uh, to the liturgy. The second a foundational principle I'd like to suggest is that we don't create the liturgy, the liturgy creates us. Um, it's, it's something that we sort of recognize that we are inheritors of, of a Christian tradition of worship that is virtually 2,000 years old. Um, Christian worship has looked very similar from the very beginning. Uh, it was basically uh, an adaptation of two things within the Jewish tradition which was the first part, the synagogue service, which is sort of absorbed into the liturgy of the word. And then the second, which is the Passover meal, which becomes the sort of ancient origin of the liturgy of the Eucharist. And so the earliest uh, origins we have of Christian worship uh, has this twofold structure of the liturgy of the word, of hearing of God's love story uh, towards us, and then moving into, transitioning into uh, uh, taking part in and receiving the one Passover lamb, uh, who is Jesus. And so that central uh, structure has been really present uh, in Christian liturgy from the very beginning. We inherit uh, that structure. And so in a certain sense, we have to be careful within the liturgy that we're not creating it uh, as we want it to be, that we inherit a tradition, that the liturgy transforms us uh, as we embark uh, on that ancient structure of, of Christian worship, that twofold movement of the liturgy of the word and of the liturgy of the Eucharist. The third thing I would say um, as a kind of foundation for liturgical ministry is that our role as liturgical ministers is, is one of prayer, not of performance. So one of the things, even as a priest, I have to be mindful of is that Christ has to be at the center stage of liturgy, not me. Uh, as the priest, right? And sometimes that can be sort of easy to conflate uh, because of the priest's central role in the liturgy. But it's true of all liturgical ministers that we are there to assist uh, in the worship. We're not there to take sort of center stage, um, that we're to aid uh, the prayer 
uh, not to distract people uh, from, from encountering Christ uh, in the liturgy. Um, it, it, one thing I, that sort of follows from this, which is that if we ever find ourselves due to health or other factors uh, incapable of performing the ministry uh, that we have sort of signed up for and done for many years, um, if we find that we're in some ways being distracting uh, or we can't perform that ministry to the, to the level that it demands, um, you know, it's, a, it's an incredible act of, of humility uh, to be able to step down, to realize that we aren't at the center of liturgy, but Christ uh, is meant to be at the center of liturgy. And so, friends, those are just a couple um, things on my mind as we do um, some liturgical training here which is that this is so important. The reason we put so much energy here at Corpus Christi and other parish into this is because it is the central mystery of the Christian faith that we don't create it, it creates us, it transforms us as we enter into it, and that we're meant to be participants in the drama of liturgy, not the main actor, right? that's Christ, um, but to be participates, participants of this incredible, uh, of this incredible drama. So again, I want to thank you all uh, for your commitment to this parish and in a special way for your commitment to liturgical ministry. It makes the liturgy here, as I've said to a million people and as people brag about all over the city, uh, the I think arguably the best liturgy in town. Uh, it's an incredible experience here and we want to continue uh, to build on that legacy and continue that tradition. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank our mass coordinators for uh, their incredible work in setting up and cleaning up after our, our liturgies here. Uh, you make a real commitment of time coming early to church and staying after uh, to do this essential ministry uh, for us uh, and to make the liturgy go uh, very smoothly. So thank you uh, for what you do. Uh, there's a few things that I want to uh, have kind of as a new emphasis for for mass coordinators, and then one um, kind of significant change that we'll be uh, embarking upon this year. Uh, the first thing is, I, I see all of the liturgical ministries, and I would say especially as ushers and mass coordinators, as kind of a team. And so one of the things that um, I've noticed occasionally is that the mass coordinator will be done with, or at least at a comfortable position with their responsibilities, and we'll be down an usher, or maybe we have no ushers and people are coming in uh, to Mass. And so one thing I'd like to suggest is that if you're at a comfortable place with your responsibilities and you don't see sufficient ushers for the people that are coming in, I'd, I'd like to encourage you to take some bulletins and, and hand them out as people come in. Um, it's a really important thing in our church because the music resources in the bulletin um, that uh, they get a bulletin as they come in and sometimes our uh, ministers of hospitality aren't here yet as people start to come in. And so I'd really encourage you as a mass coordinator that if you feel comfortable with where you're at, if you might help the ushers um, as they do that uh, essential ministry, see, our, see ourselves as a team uh, so that we can help each other uh, in those ministries. Uh, a second thing, and many of you do a great job with this. In fact, I don't know how you were instructed in the past, but just be sure to find different people for bringing up the gifts. Try to get a real diversity of, of our congregation, uh, students, permanent community. I've noticed, I think some mass quarters tend to pick the same people. Uh, and I just like to have uh, a real diversity of, of people that are coming up at all the masses. And so um, if you've kind of found a comfort zone with a certain group of people, maybe uh, stretch yourself by asking people, uh, and including maybe even visitors uh, that, that uh, have come in. And so uh, just to stress that, um, be sure maybe there's no special liturgical thing going on. For example, a baptism, uh, First Communion, um, those sorts of things where uh, we might have already promised the family uh, to bring the gifts up. So that's something to, to coordinate uh, with myself uh, before the liturgy. Um, one little thing uh, you may have noticed uh, as the procession comes up for the presentation of the gifts is I always take the water and wine first because I hand that to the deacon or to the server and then I take the bread last. Um, 
if you might say that to the uh, people that are in the back ready to hand out the gifts that I'm going to take the water and wine first, it might help it be a little less awkward as they come forward because most of the time the bread people come forward assuming I'm going to take the bread first. So it's just a little thing that you might give them a heads up that uh, Father Jeremy's going to take the water and wine first as, as they approach, uh, and that might help uh, that go a little smoother. Um, the big change for Mass coordinators this year and for the Extraordinary Ministers of Holy Communion is that we are going to move the purification of the vessels to the credence table uh, during communion uh, instead of in the sacristy uh, after Mass. Um, this is an attempt really to be in compliance with the liturgical norms on this. Um, and so um, what will change for you is that the, the distributors will take their um, uh, vessels to the credence table, uh, consume all of the precious blood, consolidate all of the hosts or the bread into one bowl, uh, and then, uh, then they will come back as a group to the sacristy, consume the leftover uh, bread and leave that one bowl uh, by the sink in the sacristy, uh, but everything else will be left on the credence table where me and the deacon will purify it uh, during uh, during the kind of post communion song and and prayer. Um, and so, what will change for you is that after mass, you'll be bringing back the trays of vessels just like you did uh, before mass. So uh, they won't be empty, but they'll be full of the cups and the in the bowls. And so you'll still bring them back. You'll still wash them as normal. They will just have already been, uh, been purified. And then me or my, the deacon, when we have time, will uh, purify and clean the one bowl left. So you don't have to worry about that, the one bowl that will be in the, um, in the sacristy. So that'll change a little bit, just sort of your post-mass routine. Um, uh, but that'll, uh, that'll change uh, going forward. Um, other than that, I just want to, again, return to thanking you for your ministry and setting up uh, for such an, assen an essential thing in our faith. Uh, thank you for your commitment of time and generosity uh, to Corpus Christi.